Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Phil Hayes Brown and I'm the CEO at Valara and this is Exploring Inclusion where we talk to, talk to thought leaders in the community about what inclusion means for them. Now the AFL is one of the biggest shows in the country and so joining us today as our special guest is Matt Finnis, the CEO of St Kilda Footy Club. Matt, welcome. Thanks for having me, Phil. Time to chat hard. <laughs> Go your hardest. All right, we will. It'll be hard here. Now, um, why don't we begin with inclusion and footy. Why is inclus inclusion important in the world of the AFL? Well, I think, Phil, if uh, the AFL uh, is to be Australia's game, then it needs to be a game for all Australians. And um, in, in the past, I think our game has been enjoyed um, by many and, and mainly played by men. Um, what we're seeing, I think, is the evolution of our game and, and this changing face of Australia is that our game needs to adapt. And so whether that's um, embracing new Australians um, who might not be familiar with our game, whether that's embracing you know, people who might have a disability, which has, you know, in the past prevented them from playing or watching, um, uh, even making the game more appealing to women and, and the growth of... Uh, women's football, I think, is all about our game adapting itself to being a far more inclusive place. Uh, now, you mentioned women a few times there, and it is a big story in the AFL, isn't it? Um, there's a lot of stories in the paper about the league this year expanding more teams. Should there be more games? Uh, what's your view on that, Matt? Yeah, well, I mean, the growth in women's football uh, has been amazing. You know, the, the establishing the AFLW competition has been uh, incredible in terms of the way in which it's grown the game and, and, and clubs. What it's also done is meant the growth of young girls playing footy um, has been incredible. They've got these role models now. I mean, yeah. you know, the old age of you can't be what you can't see. You know, we've now got these amazing role models for young girls to follow and we're seeing that them they're turning up in droves. As we grow the game at the top end, at the elite end, I think we've got to you know, find the right balance between ensuring that we've got a great TV product, entertainment product that you know, is attractive to audiences and people want to come on and watch it. And that's going to you know, be something which we've got to really cultivate carefully because the talent is still just kind of growing. So you know, as we get more teams coming in, and the Saints have got a VFLW team this year, we'll come into AFLW in 2020. We can't wait for that. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got to make sure that we can find the right balance to ensure that we do get good crowds, we do get good TV audiences, which makes this you know, a really um, great you know, entertainment offering to draw more people to our game. Yep. Yeah. And we were chatting before about rules and in all sports they change rules, don't they, over time. Basketball is my game and there's been a lot of changes in that to keep the game flowing. There's a lot of discussion around that at the AFL, both in the men's game and in the women's game. And um, you know, what's your view around rule changes generally? Yeah, it's, it is interesting. I mean, um, some people are, are traditionalists and, you yeah. know, we shouldn't change anything. Um, I've got a view that, that is... Um, you've got to be prepared to change, to adapt to new technologies and new ways of thinking. I mean, you know, you're going to start the game of golf now, you probably have 12 holes, not 18 holes, because people are time poor and, yep. and how do you find a game that works. And, and in, in establishing AFLW, you know, we've got to ensure we take the best parts of the AFL game, mm. but let's also learn from the challenges that we face in the men's game and make sure we can build something which works really well. So whether, whether that's about shorter quarters, um, whether it's a different size ball, mm. different size ground and rules, I think we should be prepared to make changes. Now, I know a lot of the women who play, yeah. you know, as a purist would say, no, I want to play the same, exactly the same as the men, and women should be given the, and afforded the chance to do that. Yeah. Um, I respect that, but I'd also say, hey, if we were going to start the men's competition now, we'd actually make some changes. Yep. So let's let's kind of take advantage of that in the way we build AFLW. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, now, a reminder to the people viewing today to send in your questions, yes? Because um, uh, this is live, Matt, we are live, Facebook Live, so send in your questions and we'll read those out as we go through. Okay, um, I guess just listening to you then, Matt, about the rules on the field, I was also thinking about the rules off the field, if you like, with access to stadiums, you know, inclusion in the AFL experience, you know, is wider than just who get certainly who gets to play the game, yeah, you yeah. talked about, but who gets to come and experience the game and what's their access like, um, you know, the employment levels, I guess, within the AFL, how, 
how um, inclusive are they, you know, at yeah. league offices, at clubs, things like that. We're going to get into our partnership a bit later, which yep. we're really excited about. But um, we'll stay with the AFL and inclusion as a subject. And now let's move to one of your core uh foundation pieces, I guess, in that inclusion space, which is the pride game. So can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I think um, for us, um, one of the great things about footy is that it drives a sense of belonging. And and that, I think, goes to the heart of inclusiveness. You know, I feel like I belong. Mm. Um, and um, the harsh reality is that there are um, sectors and groups within our community who haven't always felt Mm. that sense of belonging and in fact have felt unwelcome and the LGBTIQ community is part of that and um, so for us at St Kilda you know if, if, if it is that we believe in the power of belonging um, then we felt it was incumbent upon us to send a really strong and powerful message to that community and, and, and that you belong and we did that by by staging a pride game we did that by by bringing symbols of pride um, the rainbow mm. flag and painting that onto the 50 metre arcs and players' jumpers. And those symbols are really important points to say, hey, you're welcome here. And, and what I love about the impact of that is now, when I go to the footy week in, week out, I see, um, I see scarves and beanies and flags that have got the rainbow colours yes. alongside you know, the red, white and black of yes. the Saints. And, and yes. that... That says to me that every week now there's symbols in the crowd which says to the LGBTI community, hey, this is a place that you're welcome mm. and you're included. And so it's, it's really important for us as a footy club to do little things which have big impact. Mm. It's a bit like, um, you know, I think we were the first club to start um, doing closed captioning um, on the big screen of all the interviews that we were doing on the ground for the benefit of the crowd. Yep. And, um, and you know, building some Auslan uh, um, language into some of it. And it's such a small step for us to do, mm. but had such a really big impact for people who weren't able to fully enjoy a game of AFL because, um, you know, they, they, um, we weren't catering for it. So for, for <coughs> footy clubs, these are such small things we can do, but if we do them right, then they can have a great impact. Well, I was lucky enough to go to the Pride game um, yeah. a few months ago, and the atmosphere in the room was quite amazing. And the, the young uh, woman that spoke to us that night um, yeah. spoke so Georgie beautifully, Stone. Georgie yeah. Stone. Um, it was, you could hear a pin drop in the room. It was an incredible atmosphere in the room. Yeah, yeah. And, that's, and, and the reality is that, um, you know, Georgie Stone, who is a, a young transgender woman um, who is Victorian of the Year this mm. year, but, you know, she, she will tell the story about being a nine-year-old Saints fan mm. um, who was bullied at school. And, and when she came down to watch Saints training and, you know, Nick Revolt or Brendan Goddard, you know, treated her, you know, with respect mm. and like an equal to the other kids, how that made her feel. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, 10 years on, we're just so proud that she can feel welcome when she comes to support her footy. Absolutely. When other parts, you know, of her life um, are more challenging. Yes. So that was a great experience. Okay, um, let's move now to uh, not the VFLW, but I think the VWFL. Yeah, we've got enough acronyms. Yeah, we, lots of ship. acronyms out there. Yeah. Can you explain what is the VWFL? Yeah, well, the, the, that's the Victorian Wheelchair Football League, and, right. and uh, this year uh, the Saints are one of five. Uh, teams be playing in the Victorian Wheelchair Footy League. Yep. Um, I think we're third on the ladder at the moment. Um, so uh, I think there's one more game to go. Okay. Um, but it's a, a fantastic... I mean, to be honest, it, it's probably the most inclusive sport because it's it caters for um, you know younger people, older people. You can have a, a physical disability. You can have a, a be able-bodied. Yep. Um, you know, you can be men. You can be women. You know, it's it's this amazing um, kind of hotbed of humanity. You yes. know, in the sense that people come <laughs> together, um, and uh, you know, they, they train um, at our footy club on a on a Friday evening, and they play on a Sunday. And, um, you know, we get updates each week. You know, we have a staff meeting on a Monday. And we, okay, how did the men's team go? How did the women's team go? How did the, wheel, the wheelchair yeah. team? You know, it's, yeah. it just makes us a, us a rounded kind of footy club. So, 
Yeah, I've been really proud of the work that they're doing. That's cool. And uh, I'm keen to come down and see a game and meet some of those guys. And I think they go pretty hard, some, actually. Some images coming up on the yeah. screen to show the, the viewers there. Yeah. So we've got a question that's come in from one of the uh, fans out there. Um, uh, Saints versus Wallara. You know, there we go. Someone said, uh, could, th could there be a Wallara versus St Kilda Footy Club uh, wheelchair footy game? I can put a team together. Are you guys yeah, up for it? Yeah, okay. Well, maybe, uh, yeah, you can, you can be the coach of the Wallara team okay. and I'll maybe coach the, yeah, uh, the Saints team and we um, can pick a couple of teams and go out. I think that's a great idea. Good on. It's yeah. on. Okay. <laughs> Now, uh, let's then move to, in, in, uh, I haven't played wheelchair footy, I've, I've tried wheelchair basketball, and is it hard? Yeah, it well, so hard. well, the good thing about wheelchair basketball is the ball is round, so if you kind of bounce yes. it, you get a bit of a sense of where it's going to come yes, back to. Yes, Imagine yes. doing that oh, with an oval that. football. Oh, God. Um, these guys, they're, they're, the people who play it, they're incredibly talented. Wow. Amazing. Now, the next one on my list here is all play. Uh, can you talk to us about that? Yeah, so... Um, the All Play program is is um, is a is a great example of organisation. People coming together with a shared interest mm. and making stuff happen. And mm. and in my experience, when it comes to you know changing um, the way you work or the way you play or the what you do, um, you've got to do it in partnership with people who know what they're doing. And and we're a footy club. And whilst we have this we 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 have this value about belonging and inclusiveness, we're not the experts when it comes to all manner of um, yeah. how we embrace that. But by partnering, um, you know, with with Deakin University, with with Moose Toys, you know, with the AFL, what we've done is we've actually established a program which is designed to make your local Auskick centres more inclusive. Yeah. And so, if if uh, mum and dad have got a child who's got an intellectual disability, yeah. um, that they feel welcome when they come down to Auskick. My local Auskick centre. Um, my seven-year-old daughter was there on a Saturday morning. There's 250 kids running around. Yeah. It's a busy place. Yes. You know, um, if you've got a, a child who's um, uh, perhaps more nervous in crowds, can be you know overstimulated. Yeah. Um, how do we create an environment where we can adapt the activities? We can ensure that the coaches um, have got the confidence to be able to, to, to provide a positive experience. And, yeah. and that's what all plays about. So providing resources and training for coaches, for parents, for Auskick centres yeah. to make sure that these places give everyone a chance to do Auskick. I, I know what it's like. I, I've had, you know, um, a child who's, you know, um, uh, has got an acquired brain injury. Yeah. Um, Auskick wasn't for him. <coughs> it, was, it was difficult. Um, I've, I've got a daughter who, who loves Auskick. Right. But for me as a parent, um, parent, the opportunity, um, all parents should have an opportunity to feel part of an Auskick community. Exactly. Let alone the kids. Exactly. Because it is such part of your community. Yeah. So, so what we're trying to do is we, we want, we've got a vision that's at every Auskick centre in, in Melbourne's border bayside area yeah. should be a place where all people can come and feel welcome and included. And, and, and so we've got, um, some programs at, um, at, at, our, at RSCA Park in Moorabbin, at Linen House Centre in Seaford over the next few weeks, um, where we've, we're giving families the chance to come down and try it. Just yeah. come and try it when you might not have tried it in the past. Yeah. And, and from the little, these little things, yeah. hopefully something can grow. As I was listening to you then, I was thinking of my daughter, Phoebe. Now, you guys send players to Frankston Special Development School, where, and so Phoebe always comes home. There's a footy day, you know, and some of your <laughs> players come down. And that's great. Phoebe's also done sort of footy things with um, other kids with disabilities, you know, and that's, that's all fine. But what we're talking about here in inclusion and this all play thing is a, is a broad, you know, mainstream group, right? Yeah. Where you're part of everybody else rather than some sort of segregated thing, you know? So that's so important, right? Yeah, so because at the start of Auskick, all the parent, all the parents, all the kids, they all gather together. Yeah. You know, and they come, they come, and then everyone goes off to their own areas, and they yeah. all come back again at the end, and you yeah. get your hot dog, and you get your can of coke or your water, whatever it is. But that's part of being in the community. Exactly. And and so the more we can help you know, Auskick centres, and these are all run by volunteers. Yeah. So how can we give them the confidence that it is um, that we can provide this yeah. kind of support? And and it's, 
it's some of the most rewarding things that, that we see. Yeah. yeah. Now another question, good, this is fantastic. Is there anything for adults with a disability? Okay, so there's an age limit on this all play thing, isn't there? Yeah, so all, all play is, is, you know, from for kids age five to 13. Yep. Um, there's programs, um, and it, it was actually quite a um, uh, long, you know, um, running yep. um, footy league um, for um, adults yep, um, exactly. with a disability. And, yep. And uh, you know AFL Victoria, you know, have been running that for years. Yes. And um, with a lot, a lot of agencies and schools have been involved in supporting that. Yeah. yeah um, right. So yeah, those particular programs we're doing are more about getting the younger kids involved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it certainly is. Very good. And we've got some some Willara clients who love their all abilities footy. I think the Sandown Cobras are a team in that, and I hear bits and pieces around them. So. Um, be good to see that league get some more coverage, you know. Sometimes I look at the footy show or those sorts of shows, you know, yeah. classified, whatever, and I think it would be so easy to have a little segment to sort of, you know, talk about what's happening in outside elite, you know, levels and give that, that league... You certainly know, welcome them spending some time talking about that rather than how poorly St Kilda might be going yeah, on the field. Yeah, that's, that's right. So yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's a good idea. There you go. <laughs> All right, so we're now going to move into the St Kilda um, Wallara partnership. So... Um, we have been delighted, thrilled um, to, to build this relationship with you guys and uh, we've done some pretty cool things. So uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that and, and how yeah. some of the things we'll, we'll, we'll go over for the viewers here, some of the things that our clients are going to get to do? I think the great things um, about the partnership we have with Wallara is that we've got um, organisations that have got similar values. And, and if you can come together and say, well, we've got these similar values and then learn about each other, then it's, all, it's almost kind of the, the serendipity is that you don't know where that might take you. Yeah. You know, and so that can start out as a conversation and then, you know, so, so you know, our executive team can do an offsite at, at Sage's Cottage and work alongside your clients yes. to create a new garden. And, yes. and, you know, that's such an amazing experience for our people and hopefully it adds value to Sage's Cottage. We, yeah. we can't wait to get back there and do some more work in terms of the sensory yes. path and, and, um, and, and what you're doing there. Um, but that can also then extend to, you know, ensuring that we can get our players you know, out to your programs, um, you know, making sure that um, that people feel connected and, and, yeah. and close. And then also, you know, how can we get Wallara clients contributing into what is the, that we do? Yeah. Um, and, and when it is then that different, and, and that's driven largely through our community division of our mm -hmm. footy club, but what yeah. I love about it is that if we get, if we get the value of this partnership at a higher level, at a deeper level, yeah. then our consumer business arm yes. can say, hang on, we, we see great value working with Willara Logistics yes. in terms of the way in which we do our merchandise yes. program. You know, so, well, so, that's a great oh, there you go. You've got because, the, you know, I got the gear. to bring this in and uh, not only, um, I mean, you're playing tonight against the Bombers, of course, we, that's we a are. big game and yep. we'll be barracking for you, but um, what's the story about this sort of merchandise going forward now? Yeah, well, so from, from our point of view, um, it's just learning about. I, I'm amazed at the breadth of activity that Wallara does. You know, so from the work you do, whether it's with Monash University and the way in which you educate, you know, the future cohort of teachers coming through your program with Ventura buses, you know, your logistics business, the work of the, it, it's amazing the tentacles that place. Wallara has. It, it, it's incredible. Uh, you still find the time to do a TV show. Yes, there you go. Um, so, but for us, it, it, you know. You know, we've got a lot of stuff going on as well. Yes, but one yes. of our you know, how it, how is it that we actually provide our fans mm. with their merch, with yes. their scarves, with their jumpers, yes. with their beanies, and you know, these kind of things? At the That's moment, right. you know, we we see an opportunity to say, hey, can Wallara help us to do that? And, yeah. and um, so we, you know, we're keen to explore. Yeah, very excited about that. Um, so uh, yeah, well, I think we had some images up there on the screen, Jay, didn't we? About um, one of our clients going in the team photo shoot. That was a great experience. Catherine got to sit next to her two heroes, you know, <laughs> and your guys were so good because we knew there was a, it's a busy day, lots of people want their photos. And as soon as Catherine said, my two favourite players are, you know, blogs and blogs, all the guys juggled around, you know, and made space for her. <laughs> she was just thrilled and... and um, yeah, our so, players are terrific. And our play, you know, I'm, I'm so pleased to hear that, that that made Catherine's day, but I guarantee yeah. you it would have made our players' day yeah. as well because um, it's, uh, I think... You know, um, we get we get these young players who come in, and, and I've you know I've got a really strong view that 
that better people make better players. You yeah. know, and so if, if our players can can meet um, people from all different walks of life, I think it helps them um, to grow as people as well. I reckon that point just I might stay with that because I think there's a lot in that. Yeah, um, my neighbour is a Mad St Kilda fan, and you know all he wants to hear about is you know on field and wins, and you know, and you, you, no doubt that's your core business. I get that, but yeah. all the clubs, you know, are. Uh, they're doing this community thing and, and growing their players for reasons, yeah? So just want to talk a bit more about that. Why, yes, you're trying to win premierships, you know, and that's why yeah. you exist, you know? Yeah. But and this community stuff, you know, is it is it feel good window dressing or, or why is it increasingly do you realize these things are linked to true performance? Yeah, well, I think the starting thing is, remember that our footy clubs have grown out of the community, you right. know, these working class suburbs of Melbourne when Melbourne was getting started, you know, that they, they they had their footy team, and the footy team was owned by the community, and so um, yeah, our philosophy is that we've got to support the community which supports us. Yeah. Um, um, but as, as you alluded to, there's no doubt that we want to create you know really well rounded, connected people. Mm. You know, that's important for their well being. Mm. You know, for their own resilience. You know, we, we know that a key part of being able to cope with adversity, with, with injury, with poor form, with downturn, is that yeah. you're, a, you're a more resilient person. And part of resilience is, you know, is kind of understanding and appreciating what you have um, yeah. Yeah. and then being able to support and be connected into the community and being connected in with groups. So, you know, we've got... A, um, uh, we, we really encourage that in our not just our players but our coaches and our staff yeah. um, to be connected in you know to 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 be engaged in things which are not just about your footy yeah and I think the same point applies in the corporate world if you like you know it used to be that corporates had a foundation if you like you know did some good you know give back on the side yeah. but increasingly they're realizing that you know the more this team is connected into that, you know, yeah. that it isn't just some separate little person down the end, you know, who does a nice brochure and, you know, spends some money in some good places. Yeah. But if it's really integrated into the core operations, right, yeah. then people feel, you know, just different and better and they, they do their jobs better. They perform at high levels, you know. And, yeah, so I you're think right. like yeah. that and corporate social responsibility thing is really coming into the core, the core. operations. Yeah. It is. And, and that's, you know, and for us, um, you know, we work with a lot of different community organisations, but what I've really noticed about Wallara is that Wallara gets that and makes it then easier for us to partner. You know, so that that's because they said we're not experts. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. and so for us, we know what we're good at and we want to be better at, you know, a lot of things. But if yeah. we can be partnering with organisations that you know that get, that get that and then kind of can see how we can mix together, then that that really helps. Well, we're loving it, and um, and thank you. So, uh, I think. That brings an end to our show for this week. Um, Matt, it's been wonderful having you with us and learning a bit more about St Kilda. Um, good luck tonight against the Bombers. You're going to knock them off, aren't you? Can't Thanks, Phil. We're certainly going to have a good crack have at it. Have a good it. crack yeah. at it. Yeah. Um, I want to thank uh, our studio, uh, all the people that make the machines work here. Bella, big thank you to you. Great great job again. Jay, our creative producer and, and uh, director, etc. So great job, mate. Thank you for everyone for watching in. Thanks again to Matt. Thank you. The chair, Thanks for that hard chat. The hard chat, that's right. <laughs> Don't wait for tomorrow.